to People webinar series. May I please invite Dr. Shakila, Director, CABC MSSR of Vinat, to address all the invitees and attendees. Please unmute your mic, ma'am. Uh, thank you, Marlin. Yeah. A very uh, warm good morning to all. Uh, I wish you all a very happy International Biodiversity Day. I'm uh, privileged to welcome our honored guest to this webinar being organized by MSSBG under the Garden to People Initiative to mark the importance of Biodiversity Day uh, and reach the public uh, the importance of biodiversity conservation. Uh, since the past 30 years, MS, MSSRF is relentlessly working in the area of biodiversity conservation and sustainable development. Now, uh, uh, this uh, uh, biodiversity conservation has become all the more important in the context of the pandemic. This crisis of COVID-19 has highlighted how critical the health, health of nature for the well-being of human. So, uh, I would like to uh, welcome our honored guest. Ms. Meera, Meera Chandran, founder member of Forest First Samiti. And I would like to welcome our, um, um, our honorable uh, uh, Dr. N. Shashidharan, uh, former chief scientist, uh, Kerala Forest Research Institute, and um, Mr. Cherish Manjuran, uh, founder, founder and CEO, Cherish uh, Expeditions, and uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Sabu. Pro Vice, uh, Vice Chancellor Kannur University and Dr. Balakrishnan, a former member secretary, Kerala uh, Biodiversity Board. And, uh, and I would like to welcome our senior director, Dr. Anil, and all my colleagues and uh, uh, little friends of uh, the students of uh, Hill Bloom School and Trikai Peta School and the staff of uh, Hill Bloom School. Uh, I once again welcome all of you to this uh, webinar and I, all other participants whom I have not taken name, I, have, I uh, invite all of you to this webinar and uh, be part of this initiative. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. So now let me introduce our speakers for today, uh, today's panel discussion. The keynote speech is given by Mrs. Meera Chandran. Uh, she's one of the founder member of NGO Forest Fest Samiti that works on reforestation of uh, degraded land by conserving indigenous floral species of Western Guts through community participation. She has 16 years of working in one of the top IT companies in India. Uh, she started her journey on environmental conservation, leading an end-to-end -end waste management for a community in Bangalore, which received Bangalore Recyclathon Award in 2012. So it's a privilege to have you here, ma'am. And uh, we have Dr. Uh, N. Sushidharan, sir, former chief scientist of KFRA as panel discussant. He has more than 30 years of experience in taxonomy and exploration of forest flora and many other related fields. He has been awarded prestigious Dr. B.P. Pal National Environment Fellowship for Biodiversity for the year 2009 by Ministry of Environment and Forest India. We are honored to have you here, sir. And uh, our next Panel discussant is Mr. Cherish Manuran, founder and CEO of uh, Cherish Expeditions, a passionate transformational uh, experience curator and climate advocate. Cherish is focused on building a community of uh, conscious travelers. We are very glad to have you here, Cherish. Now I request uh, Dr. Enal Kumar, Senior Director, MSSR, to take over the session. Over to you, sir. Uh, thank you, Merlin, and uh, thank you, Shakila. Uh, we have uh, a very good panel uh, today on. World Biodiversity Day. So uh, let us start uh, this day by remembering um, Sundarlal Bahuguna, who was actually the uh, symbol of uh, uh, the tree conservation for the whole world. Uh, a person who was born in a very humble uh, background. In fact, he was born to parents of you know the uh, forest food uh, gatherers and from there he had uh, uh, grown uh, to the extent uh, uh, he was a palma vibhushan uh, recipient and he was an honorary uh, doctorate he had uh, <clears throat> from the uh, i think iit Roorkee. so he actually symbolized the uh, conservation and the restoration of uh, trees so the 
So let us remember uh, him for a second because he is actually the leader for all those who, uh, in fact, you know, uh, look for the uh, conservation of uh, tree species. So in this context, uh, if you see the slogan of uh, 2021 um, uh, Biodiversity Day is actually we are part of the solution. So the slogan says we are part of the solution. And this has built up from the uh, last year's uh, slogan that is nature, uh, nature, the nature-based solutions. We have, you know, the for uh, all our problem, solutions are in nature. So from the solutions are in nature, we are part of the solution. So today, what we are discussing, uh, the uh, restoration of uh, our tree species. Mm -hmm. If you see the kind of uh, uh, the scenario in the, the current world, uh, we... If you look at uh, the uh, kind of uh, issues, as uh, Shakila uh, said, you know, we are discussing the subject matter in the context of COVID. Why a COVID-like pandemic uh, in the world? Because you know, we have uh, actually destructed our biodiversity or destructed our environment. We cannot have a health uh, dimension different uh, from the health of the environment. So the health of the environment, the health of the animals, you know, these are related. So humans are only an animal of the nature. So we have to see the kind of one health uh, movement. And also if you look at the why the emission we are not able to control. So the emission, the best uh, tool to capture the carbon emission is actually a tree. So if enough trees are there, we can reduce the uh, temperature regime under 1.5 degrees Celsius because that is the targeted uh, uh, ceiling uh, for humanity to continue our uh, developmental uh, paradigm. But how do we uh, combine this 1.5 degrees Celsius uh, temperature? The IPCC uh, recent report says if uh, we plant 1 billion trees. 1 billion trees uh, uh, can actually uh, store somewhere, somewhere around uh, 200 billion uh, tons, 200 uh, gigatons of carbon uh, dioxide. So uh, there is a strong movement now to plant the trees. But where do we plant? There, there is a space for the planting trees. If you look at the uh, climate change, in fact, you know, the increase in temperature will help uh, to have the natural uh, vegetation in temperate region. Really the, uh, the, the boreal forest, the kind of, you know, the, uh, the Arctic and uh, the Antarctic region, the Antarctic region in particular, we may have uh, green growth or those countries closer to our poles will have more vegetation. But the climate change uh, in that context, it is going to distract the uh, biodiversity of the tropical region. So the uh, tropical region. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, mute. Yeah. Sorry, sir, please continue. So the, uh, the point uh, I'm making is the tropical region, if we continue our uh, business as usual scenario in the development, we will be losing around uh, 200 million hectares of uh, uh, forest and you know, the tree cover from the tropical region. So which means we will not be able to not only contain this uh, temperature uh, under 1.5 degrees Celsius, we may even, you know, go uh, beyond uh, that uh, 3 degrees Celsius uh, threshold. So the, uh, the situation is so critical, very, very critical. So the only answer, uh, in fact, uh, is actually planting trees. Uh, planting, so the uh, discussion which we titled uh, 
planting trees outside the forest area conserving trees outside forest area what is next so if you look if you see the uh, forest uh, cover every year in fact our forest cover is increasing uh, in in india uh, at least you know the slight percentage of increase is there but are we increasing this forest cover with the right trees no so we we are actually planting the wrong trees in wrong place many many a cases you know we plant in that way so we have to have the right trees in the right place which means if you look at the endemic trees should be in the endemic region wherever it belongs to you know you cannot uh, uh, have a, you, you can go for plantation but you know if you cannot have the kind of a full diversity from or the benefits from the trees if you are not planting that tree in the right place so the 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 uh, issue which we are discussing uh, is actually the saving of our uh, endangered trees our rare and endemic uh, tree species and uh, restoring our degraded forest uh, ecosystems uh, degraded forest ecosystem when i say including the agricultural landscapes because agricultural landscapes is the space where you know we can go for uh, tree planting and uh, if you take for example the coffee farms or if you take for example the uh, tea gardens uh, we have enough uh, space for planting uh, provided all of us are come together and you know go for the uh, plantation in a scientific manner so this is the context where uh, we are discussing i am not uh, <coughs> uh, you know at this point i am not uh, elaborating the points so we will listen uh mira uh, mira is known to uh, many of the conservationist uh, all of our i would say in uh, this part of the country as a <clears throat> as a very good conservationist so my respect to her is uh, the the kind of effort she has uh, taken uh, she from since i think uh, last 10 years i would say Uh, she is engaged she and her uh, team including her uh, husband uh, engaged in um, conserving uh, tree species these native tree species and uh, trying to restore the uh, degraded forest areas if you take for example the western ghats it's an very very critical uh, biodiversity area so i uh, we will have uh, her presentation uh, first uh, she will elaborate the how she is uh, doing this restoration work and what are her major lessons what 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 has she learned uh, from this 10 years of experience and what are her uh, ideas and you know the thinking to have uh, this uh, more uh, trees and as a tree conservation as a movement how do we take uh, forward and we have as uh, been introduced uh, we have uh, dr shashidharan he is a well known uh, tree uh, taxonomist and uh, he has more than three decades of uh, experience in the area of tree conservation and we have our uh, cherish manjuran so he also will uh, join with his perspective in the this i invite uh, meera to take uh, the forum meera Sir. yeah thank you sir thank you for that introduction uh, first of all happy to be part of uh, uh, the ms is vg's uh, uh, you know session and uh, really honored because first of all uh, you know i respect a lot of people who are already there uh, you're all experts in the in the field and uh, you know what we are doing is only the learning that we have actually taken from all of you and we are just translating that into our field work so i'll just quickly uh, take over to the uh, uh, presentation i hope my desktop is visible for everybody and i am audible enough uh, you are audible ma'am your presentation is uh, not visible could you please share the screen okay one minute um
Is it visible? Oh, yes, ma'am. Uh, but slides. Uh, yeah. Is it visible now? Yeah, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma yeah, right. All right. Uh, so this is uh, this is a journey of uh, about ten years. I, I think Dr. Anil sir is absolutely right. It's been over ten years that you know we've been doing this. Uh, to just uh, bail myself out, I am uh, not a specialist in the field. I'm only a field person uh, who learns from a lot of people, including Dr. Anil. And uh, my uh, you know knowledge in terms of indigenous species uh, is only a minuscule of what I could learn on the field. Uh, so pardon me for any mistakes that I would be making. And I think it's it's a process of joint learning and a co-learning that, you know, we all do together. Uh, so to just ta start, uh, <clears throat> we work in the catchment of Kabini and Kaveri, uh, two districts on either side of the Brahmagiri Hills. Uh, one is uh, Vaina, which is in Kerala, and the other is Kodagu, which is in Karnataka. Now, as far as the landscape is concerned, it doesn't really worry about the political borders. Uh, it doesn't matter whether it is Karnataka or Kerala. It is just a single contiguous landscape uh, with similar features, uh, similar kind of uh, uh, flora, and of course, geology too. Uh, we can't forget the geology on which the flora, flora is sitting. And uh, uh, the landscape, uh, both the landscapes are uh, east uh, sloping. Uh, the uh, one is definitely the, uh, the catchment of Kabini and the other three rivers, three major rivers, you know, uh, you know, Vainal is home to three rivers and similarly, you know, Kodagu is the origin of river Kaveri. Uh, now, this is a small land that uh, we have worked on, a private land, and uh, it was just about, uh, uh, you know, sparse coffee on the land, hardly any trees. Uh, when the survey map uh, shows uh, hardly about 10 trees on the land. And uh, we did three to four years of just pocket draining effort of lantana removal. Lantana is a local invasive on the land. And uh, that's what we were doing for the first uh, uh, three to four years. But then uh, we uh, quickly realized that it is not enough to just remove lantana and there is definitely need for, uh, you know, a canopy cover. So over few years. In fact, one of the features that, would, that I would like to highlight was there was heavy soil erosion on the land. So when you go and stand at the, uh, you know, the lowest point of this particular hill slope, you would just see red soil coming during monsoon. It was all the topsoil was getting washed away. It was horrendous to watch, watch this. And I'm sure most of you would have seen this, uh, you know, when if you're from the hill district, you would have seen this if you're from Vainad or Iduki or you know any of the hill districts along the Western Ghats, you would see this phenomenon uh, when there is any cutting of uh, you know the hill slope for uh, roads or shops or anything. You will see that you know the uh, the topsoil is getting eroded very fast, and this is exactly what happened here. Uh, the, once the trees were gone, there was heavy soil erosion. But what has been transformed is in this ten years is this. Uh, we've been able to conserve close to 150 uh, tree species of Western Ghats, thanks to MSSRF and the team there. You know, I've had a lot of learnings, you know, in the whole process, because uh, it was, first of all, the, uh, the what to plant is very important. And what are these indigenous species? Uh, and that is that was, at, uh, you know, of utmost uh, importance, because, you know, then you don't want to just go and introduce another invasive or another exotic on your uh, uh, land area, right, which is actually belonging to a larger landscape. But the beauty of this is that over these past 10 years, 150 tree species are surviving on the land. land. Many of them are in, they're endangered and threatened taxa. And uh, we have had our learning on what these RETs are. And to make it simple, I call it, call them the tigers of the floral world. We always, uh, you know, uh, talk about tiger faunal species. People want to come and see the tiger, but I'm, I'm sure there are much more tigers in the floral world. And we are fast losing it, and we definitely need to conserve them, give more importance to them. Wild edible fruits, there are several of them, uh, you know, that we are conserving, which is bringing uh, the transformation journey that I have to talk about is that uh, frogs, several species of frogs on the land, uh, loads of leaf litter falls on the land because of it. Earlier, these, uh, during summer, it was all cracked up soil. 
And nowadays you see that there is hardly any red topsoil coming out of the uh, landscape. There's nothing, you know, if I, I, I have not seen that phenomenon at all after the trees have come up. So which means this is an absolute plus because you are keeping your so uh, topsoil on the land. Even if you're doing 10% of your land uh, under this kind of a grove condition, it will hold your topsoil, which means you don't have to just keep adding chemicals, pesticides into the rest of your plantation. Then uh, you have loads of predator birds. Those are bird species in the first place, forget about predator birds. But the, uh, so which actually is managing the pest on the rest of the plantation. If you, if you have any diseases, it's that ecosystem that takes care of it. And leeches, you know, nobody likes leeches, but you know, I must confess that in uh, after uh, five or six years of this work, mm -hmm. suddenly, you know, it was always, we go to this place, we always feel that, you know, it feels so dry, constant feeling of dryness. But suddenly we started observing there were leeches, uh, you know, first time we got leech bites on the land, it was in 2015, you know, after working for almost six or seven years uh, on, on, on this kind of a constant planting, uh, you know, on the land. But that's a plus because, you know, what it indicates is that frogs and leeches, what it indicates is that your soil moisture has improved and you really don't need to worry about this drying up and cracking up of the soil uh, during the summer. So what is Vainad at the point, you know, you, you would hear me talk about Vainad and Kodagu more because, you know, I have more field experience there and most of the photographs are from either Vainad or Kodagu. Uh, overall, 40% uh, of the original vegetation does not exist. This is actually part of the, uh, the, uh, the famous WGEP report, which is also called the Madhav Gargil report, Dr. Gargil report. Uh, the photograph that you see is uh, very close to the tropical wet evergreen forest, uh, closer to Kunyong area. Uh, if you just walk a few meters away from this particular land, you will see dense forest. So what you realize is that what you have lost on this particular land are those dense forests. Uh, from uh, forest, we have transformed it to tea estates. And now from tea estates, we are transforming our land to ginger. Uh, absolute denudation of landscape is what is going on at the moment. The, the impact of it, a part impact of it that we can think of is consecutive years of landslides and floods. This was an image that was taken from Kurcharmala. And when we went there, there's severe soil piping in some of the areas and then uh, absolute denudation of land and the entire, you know, almost seven kilometers of slide on Kurcharmala. Several of you would have seen the landslide yourself. So it was devastating. Uh, this is also another one. This is from Kodagu. Uh, so you will see the satellite images before. You can see a small house there. And this is what has happened just after that. Uh, so I believe this is what the landscape, the high rainfall regime also means that your land is prone to sliding. And what is it that we are contributing? You know, overall, if you look at it from coffee estates, typically the coffee estates have moved into a high uh, density of silver oak. Uh, there was a study by Cafnet, uh, you know, a few years ago, which said that if you have more than 30% of silver oak on the land, then the cup quality of your coffee uh, cannot be maintained. Ultimately, the, the quality of the coffee that you drink ultimately will, will not be great. But of course, we don't, you know, worry about the intermediaries, you know, because we don't worry about the quality of coffee. We are only looking at the yield. But there could be a time, you know, in future where the international markets are going to say that, look, vinyl coffee is not tasty. Then what do we do? So uh, we, are, we have uh, highly intensified the coffee, uh, you know, the coffee estates into, you know, high intensity of silver oak, which is an exotic species. And again, the leaf litter is not as beautiful as our Western Guard species. And... Uh, uh, of course, the other aspect definitely that we need to highlight is the rock bee uh, uh, population uh, because 58% of pollination on coffee is because of bees. So if you don't have bees, you don't have coffee. Uh, I'm talking about coffee because Vinand is predominantly dependent on coffee. It's a cash crop. But if you look at any other food species also, you need bees. Uh, humans can completely be eliminated from this earth. But if you don't have bees, then a lot more species are going to go away from the face of the earth. 
uh, yesterday um, uh, did face there was uh, international B day, right? Uh, now, when we just uh, come back to coffee, you know, what are the kind of benefits that trees can bring into coffee plantations? Definitely, like, you know, see, the advantage of coffee, unlike tea, is that it still needs partial shade uh, and it needs leaf litter, micronutrients, then you know, need pollinator attracting species, you need uh, soil moisture conservation and it's, uh, uh, you know, and landslide mitigation, all that. So, which is a big plus you know, from, from a crop perspective, right? From a crop's angle also, you need trees. Uh, so if you if you see in the, the study in Mexico, which said 94 to 97 percentage fewer birds when you're going to sun coffee. Sun coffee is like just, you know, growing how these days people are growing ginger on in Vina. Cut off all the trees, remove all the floral species, and then grow ginger, right? You feed on the nutrient in the soil for the first two years, and then you're you're done. You just can't use it. It's like June. You just keep moving from one land to the other. Uh, so ultimately, what happens? Uh, you need the trees to increase the lifespan of coffee itself as as a as a plant contributes to soil fertility, and of course, you can uh, you know have large old growth trees that will ensure that. Uh, you know, honeybees are maintained in your uh, estate. So when you when you talk about it, uh, coffee, though it is a cash crop, it can, you know, it has a potential to ensure that the trees are also conserved along with coffee. Uh, if we do the right things, uh, you know, in the right places. So what we did was we were, uh, you know, we are actually working on these multiple models of restoration. Of course, we started with our small private land. We figured out that 150 native trees, no coffee estate owner is going to plant. You know, if we try to popularize this 150 native trees that we have conserved on this land, nobody is going to take it. So it's a it's a given thing. So which means that we have to take a middle ground, right? So then we started, uh, you know, understanding what is it that you know what is the conversation that we can have with coffee estate growers, uh, and then we arrived at the 30 species that we are. Uh, you know, trying to popularize. Now, as for the sacred groves and forest land, of course, we do forest land restoration. Since the discussion is more on the uh, trees outside forest land, let me just stick the conversation around it. Uh, and then there are a lot of sacred groves. Sacred groves, I'm not talking about sacred groves, uh, should be land connected to a, a specific religion's uh, temple. You know, it could be anywhere, right? Sacred groves can be even in your farmland. Uh, the kind of grove that you can create, if you have a 10 acre of land, uh, why not put in some 10% of or 1% of the land in your grove uh, where uh, you can, uh, you know, leave it for your other ecological services. Uh, but in our case, what we have done is we have worked with uh, groves in Kodagu, uh, which were degraded, which were degraded because of, uh, uh, you know, reasons uh, like uh, in some time in the past, trees were felled, it was completely open. So those kind of growth, it was possible for us to socialize the idea of 100 native species. And we have even gone up to, yes, 100 native species we have conserved on this land. Now, riparian buffer is that small strip of land uh, next to, you know, any river stream, right? I mean, you go and uh, completely remove any vegetation on that and uh, start taking over the land for planting your coffee, definitely not sustainable. Because uh, probably prior to 2018, nobody would listen to me if I, when I say this. But today, I think people are a little bit more aware because floods will means, you know, the river is capable of taking anything that is in its course. That's how the rivers are. It's, it's not a static system. It's a dynamic system. And it has got a lot more of engineering and life sciences associated with the river. Right. So uh, riparian buffer are those strips that needs to be conserved, conserved. And it is a very good uh, starting point to talk to uh, farmers. Most of them are paddy growers and to understand how uh, these are strips that could be conserved so that they don't lose their land. In fact, this is a conversation that is going on in Korobo already. People are so worried that they will lose their land during the uh, peak monsoon, uh, uh, you know, during uh, severe rains. Uh, so these are some of the conversations that we have had. We also work with farmers who have lost their land due to landslide. And those are places where we have, uh, uh, you know, helped them with vetiver, micro nurseries, bamboo uh, species and all that stuff. 
of course, when we talk about any planting, you need to start with seeds. And uh, seed collection itself is, a, is an amazing exercise. Kids can do it. Uh, in, in my view, if kids can be the seed collectors uh, of, uh, uh, you know, mother trees outside the forest land, and I'm sure we will be able to collect much more seeds than we, we are able to do it now. Um, of course, these are common uh, species found in Vainad. Uh, what happens is people don't look up the tree when it is seeding, when the fruits are dead. And, you know, and I was so surprised that uh, sometimes working uh, in Vainad, uh, you assume that uh, the tribal boys are uh, much more knowledgeable and capable than you think, uh, you know. But then it was a big surprise to me that they were not looking up the trees. They have not seen the uh, Melinia arborea or a kumbal tree closer to, uh, you know, where they stay. So, uh, you know, it was like a process of learning along with them to tell them when it fruits. Uh, so I think these are, uh, you know, beautiful outdoor activities kids can definitely have. Uh, collection of seeds, so doing their small seed bed and things like that. Uh, now, this is the 80 to 100 species is what we have. We typically grow or, and plant every uh, year. Uh, I'm not saying that we are in a position to do seed to sapling for every species. We are in a position to do seed to sapling for just about 20 species. But the rest of it, we are depending on other nurseries. Uh, in fact, MSRF's uh, nursery is an amazing place. And uh, we've been, uh, you know, every year during that time, I, uh, you know, I uh, end up there because, you know, we need to ensure that we have the right species for the right ecosystem where we are planting, what Dr. Anil mentioned. So that's what, uh, you know, we've been doing. Uh, so over the years, the degraded lands that we have worked on are uh, highly invaded by invasives. Invasives like these, Lantana camara is one of the prominent invasives in our landscape. This particular image is from a forest land. But uh, nevertheless, what we need to understand is these kind of landscapes, open lands are available. I have seen school compounds where the land is just left and then, you know, there is no open canopy. Uh, and then it's completely left for uh, uh, the invasives to take over. These are lands, uh, you know, small patches of land that one can use to uh, grow the uh, good trees uh, or conserve those trees, you know, that, that needs to be conserved in the landscape. Uh, every time when you speak to the schools, uh, you know, they are always talking about fruit trees or something else. But then, you know, I, I think the discussion also needs to move uh, beyond fruits or beyond the direct consumption kind of a thing and uh, talk about the whole ecosystem as such, you know, which can actually support a larger biodiversity. Um, now, if you look at a lantana space like this, this is on the forest land. And when we remove lantana using the manual mechanism, I will just tell you what, how it is done. Uh, you would see a lot of natural regeneration of saplings under the lantana. And, but then what happens is it is not able to go above this particular layer of lantana. In Vainad, I have seen chamata. Uh, which is butyl monosperma that comes out of the lantana without, you know, too much of a trouble. Uh, plus cassia fistula, which is your canicuna. These are two species that you will, uh, you know, prominently see, you know, even when there is a lantana patch. But other species like Cysigium cumini, there's like plenty of Cysigium cumini, uh, which is which is the jamun, which is uh, regenerating under the lantana, but that doesn't come up, you know, above the lantana layer. Uh, so. Of course, we have another villain, uh, the invasive species, which is uh, the Senna spectabilis. Uh, this is completely taken over the forest lands in uh, uh, Vainad. I was surprised when I went to one of the uh, coffee estates, a very well-managed coffee estate, that person had a Senna tree and he did not even realize that, you know, it was an alien invasive species. So there is also a need for people to understand that these are species that uh, it's best not to be kept and ensure that, you know, they plant a native tree instead of, uh, you know, keeping a senna uh, to, uh, you know, sit and regenerate on that land. Uh, so what we do, uh, like I said, is species diversity maximization. It is not about the number of saplings alone. It is also about how, how much you are able to maximize the species that you are, grow, you know, if you're uh, working on a specific land, how can you maximize the species? On that, the pollinator species are very important because uh, e even if you are able to just plant the pollinator species alone, which are keystones, good enough because you know then the rest of it will be brought by the pollinator species. 
humans can only do a little bit you know so let's be mindful that you know we 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 are only a small speck in this whole you know beauty of nature uh we can do uh, you know we can plant wild edible fruits because there is also a need to popularize the wild edible fruits you know in terms of our own nutrition right we don't consume this we we and our fruit consumption has also you know come to an abysmally low level especially in kerala i have observed that people don't consume enough fruits and vegetables because they are worried that it is laden with pesticides so why not popularize the wild edible fruits and you know ensure that you know there are more people consuming these uh, wild edible some of them are already there uh, gasinia uh, definitely is something which finds its use in fish curry and of course in corgo that's used in pandi curry the you know the uh, pork meat uh, 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 sarka ashoka i see resorts uh, growing uh, the drooping ashoka after chopping all the native species i think there is a need for us to sensitize uh, people who are coming from outside to you know to just politely tell them that look lawns are great but you know it's also need to have you know ensure that you know we conserve our local species in and around uh some of the species that uh, one should be mindful of not removing from the land you know for example in minard i have already seen that there is a process where uh, the large old growth uh, akti trees are being removed completely from the coffee estates and they just plant uh, coffee there what you don't realize is that that atti is so important for the coffee pollination uh, if you have atti then your pollen you don't have to worry about the pollination so an old growth atti needs to stay there instead of being removed so atti is a, uh, atti is something that will you know that will that can be established beautifully well the forest land that we are working on atti is uh, whatever we have planted it is coming out very well it is established very well in that landscape uh, nyaval uh hardly nyaval trees you know in fact recently in bynard somebody was asking me for seeds of nyaval i was surprised because i was under the impression that nyaval is something which will be widely available in any coffee estate but unfortunately people have chopped off their trees and that is why they are coming and asking for these seeds um vendeka vendeka recently you know some uh, you know there was a carpenter who told me that vendeka is the best species for not having termites on the furniture that you make now uh, whether we like it or not there is definitely a timber use uh, which is connected to the trees so uh, when you are removing a native species from the species from the land people are very happily uh, chopping off the native species but when they plant they plant a silver oak so why not you know popularize these kind of species that can uh you know that are very capable of handling in the landscape right like you know new lady of the forest is something that you will see in the forest land it's such a beautiful tree so uh you know ha have vendeka uh, planted now this is a beautiful riparian buffer uh it is a small stretch of land uh you know of the river panavalli uh, panavalli is nothing but the uh, the papnashni river from the brahmagiri hills uh the famous tirunelli temple that we know and uh, what you have on either side are large uh, wild mango trees i've even seen a maruti uh, you know along the river banks so this is that small ecosystem right and ultimately what happens is if you have a, a species like maduka nerifolia the fruits will fall and the fish can eat and that that's that ecosystem that we also need to build so it's not just about just the shade but there is something that is so many things that is invisible that is happening without our knowledge you know with the nature is capable of doing uh now chopping off these kind of trees along your uh, stream bank is i would say criminal you know so keep the uh, trees because ultimately if you want land uh, beyond the tree layer uh, to be intact you need the trees uh so this is a degraded patch uh what we have done uh, over the past few years is we have just identified about 25 riparian species uh, that we can conserve now when i say we can conserve it is also because of the availability of the species right i'm not saying that uh, there are only 25 species but i'm saying that this is what we've been able to do and we think we can replicate without any big problem you know if uh, if if we put in some effort in doing that uh some of the riverine species persian kulurma actually uh, kulurma whatever we planted was doing amazingly well along the stream course wild mango wild mango species you don't have any problem you know it's just an easy job you can plant it uh ilipa also 
uh, and Artuvanji. And I'll just show you an image of Artuvanji. These are the cuttings that we got uh, along the river. And then we just planted the cuttings and they're doing, you know, beautifully well. Um, I've always, uh, you know, loved this tree. Uh, and I've always wondered why coffee estate growers are not planting this tree. Primarily because, uh, you know, it goes straight. And generally, you know, if you take uh, Kodagu or Vainar, even if you have a large shaded tree, the first thing you do is shade loping. Now, uh, I, I doubt if you really need shade loping on this tree. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, so one aspect is that it just goes straight and uh, why, you don't need to, you know, do too much of a shade loping and things like that. Why not plant this? You know, it's, it's an amazing, it's also an endangered tree, right? Uh, from the landslide perspective, Betimer where micro nurseries is something I feel uh, the hill slopes should uh, you know start doing. Uh, this is this is a work that we've done in Kodagu in the sec second Monangiri that village, and uh, we had supplied this vetiver uh, you know micro uh, you know vetiver uh, slips, and then they have the farmers have only grown it because there is always this constant worry every uh, season of uh, rain you know about landslides, small landslides, small uh, you know uh, loss of land things like that. So these are things the farmers can themselves uh, take care of. Now, this is a large old growth tree. And always when, uh, you know, I, I want to talk about something, uh, you know, about tree conservation, we say that we have to keep these trees. The old growth ones have to be kept. And if we are able to keep these trees and ensure that the trees are not chopped off, planting is really not required because the, those trees are capable of doing it. Another mm -hmm. activity that we do in the coffee estates is to remove the new uh, seedlings that falls, right? I mean, with all the coffee practices that we have, we remove any small seedling that is already sprouting. Why not take those uh, seedlings itself and, you know, instead of removing it from the coffee growers, coffee growers can start supplying it to, you know, organizations like ours and we will happily take it from them for whatever small cost uh, that is required. Uh, restoration, uh, you know, what we've, some of the steps that we have done in restoration is uh, lantana. Lantana removal is using this methodology called cut root stock methodology. It's not enough if you just go remove lantana from the top. Unless you remove the root stock with a small spade, it's a, uh, a small specially designed spade. It's very easy to do it. And, uh, you know, you have to remove the cuts, uh, you know, root stock uh, during the rains or just after the rains, because otherwise it will not, it will not be easy. During the summer, this is not a work that uh, we can do. Removing rootstock is, you know, especially on dry hill slopes is going to be very difficult. So likewise, after removing the rootstock, thousands of uh, seedlings, we have, uh, you know, basically, I, we call it uh, freeing from lantana strangulation. This is a Cysegium cumi that was, uh, that had already naturally regenerated. And this is what it has become. Uh, it's already become, you know, started giving new leaves and all that stuff. Like this, thousands of them we have freed up. This is a, a devil's tree, Alstonia scolaris. And uh, uh, it was just having some two sticks, that's all. And, you know, and, and, and the magic of rain. Uh, this, these are small interventions, right? I mean, you don't need to do big stuff. So it's not always about planting alone. It's also about conserving what the nature is already doing. Uh, for soil conservation, these are small steps. A lot of people are aware of it. One is a swale and the other is a, uh, you know, a trench. Uh, mulching, you know, when you're in places that you are not accessible uh, in terms of uh, big watering and all that stuff, mulching is a beautiful process. Put loads and loads of leaf litter on it and the nature is taking care of it, right? I mean, we have had great survival only by doing mulching. Uh, you know, and overall, this is what we have seen over 85% survival uh, rate is what we have recorded. Uh, this, this, per, these images are from the sacred grove land and uh, magic of two rains with all this mulching and all that we have had 85% uh, survival. Now, grass is uh, an element that we should not, uh, you know, ignore. Uh, whenever you have grass uh, growing on a restoration site like this, uh, it's not uh, ideal to go and chop off everything and make it clean. Uh, you need grass because during the uh, summer months, it's the grass that actually takes care of your small sapling uh, in terms of uh, morning, collecting morning, morning dew and everything, you know, keep, keep the biomass on the ground. Of course, we do work jointly with the communities. This is from Vainad. Uh, uh, you know, we've, during the peak COVID times is when uh, we did uh, part of the restoration last year. 
and this is actually provided livelihoods for them. Uh, some of the things that we follow for the 85% success rate is one to two year old saplings is what we typically plant. Very small saplings, we have had very low success rate because we also maintain uh, for about three to five years in the uh, land where we work. Uh, definitely what Dr. Anil said, I, I would 100% go by that. Selection, planting of species based on land conditions is a very important aspect. Plant only during monsoon and ensure some browsing areas are left without planting. I mean, imagine you have deer, ungulates and other things. You know, this is actually great fodder area for them. Don't go and plant here because your uh, saplings will never survive there. Uh, so you can actually watch our five minute video online. I don't want to waste uh, time talking about that. Uh, ultimately to just to sum it up. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So ultimately sum it up. Uh, Conserving the grandmother trees, I would say that is the primary aspect. Heritage trees need to be conserved. You know, Supreme Court recently told us that 75,000 per tree, you know, the rest of the uh, life of the tree, if it is 100 uh, years, uh, a tree, ecological services, uh, you know, uh, valued up to 75 lakhs. So the, the first thing that we need to is, is do is to conserve the old growth trees. That's why I felt payment for ecological services. These are not things that uh, you know, uh, it's not a, you know my idea or something. It is all there. Only thing is we don't see that translating it on the field. Farmer level incentives for standing trees, uh, planting diversity. Uh, of course, avoidance of planting the same pit every year. Uh, I feel there is a definitely a need for the species diversity in the forest department nurseries to improve because you know that's the easiest access for farmers uh, in terms of uh, sapling diversity. And uh, jackfruit is already becoming a superfood uh, in the international market. Why not uh, better processing? Um, and of course, leaving your land, 10% of your land for uh, food, forest, or groves. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Meera. Thank you so much uh, for a very wonderful uh, experience thank sharing. You. Thank you. I'm sure uh, the panelist. Uh, Okay, I have uh, more uh, uh, food for thought uh, to respond. Dr. Shashi, uh, can you give your uh, yeah. view on you know, the practices which she uh, follows? Uh, how much you know it is? Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah you, you can hear it. You yeah. can hear. Thank you, Neera Chandra, for excellent presentation and a very That's useful true. work you have carried out in the Vainad region. Because as we all know that uh, in the forest, especially in the degraded forest, is that tree cover is fast disappearing. It has its own consequent ecological disaster, which we are experiencing for the past uh, one or two decades, land, um, landslide, uh, excessive running of water, and other natural calamity. But in the natural forest, when you are restoring it, uh, you should also consider what should be the optimum stand density in a particular vegetation. For example, if you are restoring a moist deciduous forest, if the ideal stand density is something around 120 to 153. If it is an evergreen forest, the number will go to up to 200. So these aspects should also be considered. Then another aspect is we have seen is that why this regeneration is not progressing, especially in the moist deciduous forest? When you uh, revegetate or do uh, echo restoration with the trees, one thing we have to be considered is that uh, to the extent possible, to be with the native species. Because this has already been suggested where Royal Botanical Garden Q recently I saw an article in their site how they are promoting native species wherever they are supporting the echo restoration or enriched planting. That is a very important aspect. As I know that you have not introduced any exotic species, you have given due privilege to native species. That's a very important and a very uh, helpful sign. Then another aspect uh, which I would like to uh, point out is that in many cases, why this natural regeneration is not taking place? For example, if you have uh, set apart a certain area uh, where this uh, degraded forest is there, demarket in the area, then control two factors. One is that fire. 
and another is uh, that uh, uh, you grazing or trampling by animals these days because uh, nearly some 25 years back we have conducted a study in the, uh, looking into the factors of this uh, natural regeneration in a moist area for us because that is the most present uh, vegetation type in kerala due to various other factors because uh, people living so close to the proximity they are having their own meat the timber requirement firewood grazing on as we start growing then we exam study our study shows that as far as phenology flowering is regular fruit production is adequate then even the number of seeds produced every year is sufficient and then what happened is that in the subsequent year during summer the summer fire is very frequent in especially in the new forest area no your audio got muted unmute unmute sashi hello dr sashi hello sashi sir i guess your audio is uh, muted yeah sir uh, sashi sir sashi sir hello your audio got muted hello you unmute your audio yeah like we had a break no no maybe you can switch off your video and uh, come to your rodeo unmute it so probably once you can unmute your video then probably can once again you can mute hello dr sashi i think he's not able to hear as well sir and the technical vision sir the sister there is one sir ipan join cheyum sir left cheyadine session tirichu varum test one alla angana anengil namaku we will ask a cherish to join absolutely uh, sir i am right here whenever uh, you want me to speak uh marlin can have cherish 
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Very much. Phone, uh, phone up, uh, Shashi, and just tell yes, him that you know we are breaking him now, and now we are giving. Yes, sir. Uh, Manjura. Yes, sir. I, I will call him. I okay. will call him, sir. okay sorry for the interruption uh, so we will have now uh, cherish uh, in the panel and cherish has uh, he has been introduced as an young uh, entrepreneur and uh, let us have his views on you know the involvement of uh, private industries in the uh, restoration of trees outside forest area cherish absolutely uh, first of all thank you so much for uh, having me uh, dr anil and uh, all the team members of mssrs and mssbg uh, I'm an experienced designer. I uh, run Cherish Expeditions, which is a private entity where we uh, focus on uh, bringing in. Uh, it's an experiential travel company. We are uh, trying to build a community of conscious travelers. As we all know, we all have a travel bug in us, and uh, we just wanted to not just travel, but also uh, bring in uh, the idea of traveling with a purpose, giving back to the uh, environment that we live in. so what we usually uh, did uh, until now since 2018 uh, have been uh, picking up hand picked uh, eco warriors or uh, aspiring change makers of tomorrow to come together uh, and work on uh, conservation projects or projects that focus on achieving the uh, a couple of united nations sustainable development goals uh, now we really feel that uh, it is super important to uh, have each one of us to come together and uh, work on uh, uh, causes like climate change which is knocking on our doors and it is not just one person's uh, duty but collectively uh, we wanted to work together on the cause and we brought in volunteer programs uh, along with the support of uh, organizations like say mss uh, bg and a couple of other uh, ngos and local communities we work on community based tourism to achieve the united nations sustainable development goals as we mentioned uh, we really believe, believe that it is super important for uh, uh, everyone to collectively work towards uh, uh, such uh, initiatives uh, a couple of sustainable development goals that we focus on achieving through our travel programs are uh, uh, sdg 13 which is climate action uh, 14 uh, life below water and 15 life on land these are some of the uh sdgs that we focuses on achieving uh speaking about what we do to give a, a good idea for the young guns who are present here especially students uh we would really like to say uh, uh i i would like to mention a couple of projects from the last uh 6 months which is during the lockdown time when uh we could travel again responsibly we worked on a climate change mitigation expedition which happened uh Uh, at alapi uh, at the longest and largest lake in india of course the vembanad coal the vembanad ecosystem the idea was on a conservation project we were working uh, along with eight of the selected change makers from across india uh, who were aspiring uh, environmentalists we had uh, a couple of conservationists we had a couple of uh, film makers who wanted to document the whole process and spread the word uh, all of us came together along with a, a local uh, ngo Uh, ashoka trust for research in ecology and environment we worked together identifying a problem uh, depletion of the fishery resources in the vembanad ecosystem uh, as an experiential learning journey according to uh, sir david a cobe this is a learning based journey uh, uh, we set out on an impact expedition uh, building fish sanctuaries uh, which act as a safe haven for fishes to breed uh we also took the participants to a couple of uh, uh mangrove spaces like padera manal uh, learning about the whole ecosystem of vembanad along with the local fishermen folks and community uh working on some capacity building and spreading awareness uh, we built something called fish sanctuaries and uh, as our uh, uh, as our knowledge partner ashoka trust uh, uh, survey uh, we got to know that the number of Uh, fishes especially sardines and a couple of uh, uh, say aggregators who feed on these fishes have rose significantly after we built something uh, called a fish sanctuary which also acts as a artificial mangrove uh, this contributed directly towards achieving a couple of indicators of the united nations sustainable development goal 13 and 14 which is climate action and uh, life below water 
we also had a couple of partners who had come in uh, to support us on these courses and uh, exactly like uh, dr anil said uh, bringing in uh, private entities like tata motors to uh, provide us with uh, their electric vehicles suvs uh, nexon evs for us to travel throughout the journey for a week or so and uh, tourism boards like uh, responsible tourism mission kerala which is a part of uh, kerala tourism uh, and a couple of other organizations like uh, cjh casino group of hotels uh, had joined uh, us as uh, partners joined hands to work towards achieving the cause and uh, contributing uh, towards this impact expedition uh, another uh, project that we recently did during february uh, of course along with uh, the support of uh, mss bg which is a part of mss rf uh, under the guidance of uh, dr anil uh, with the uh, support of uh, teammates uh, we could identify a sacred grove which is called uh, uh, you know sarpakav right at mapitacheri uh, kav in kannur uh, where there should have been a human interference to intervenes to work on the restoration of the uh, sarpakav and uh, uh, along with the support of mss bg we could join hands and get volunteers from payanur college and uh, we selected uh, another eight such aspiring sacred grove warriors as we like to call call it so seven to eight of uh, eco warriors who wanted to make a difference while they travel we all went together to uh, kannur went to mapatacheri kav along with uh, the 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 local community who were there uh, part of uh, mapatacheri kav and the local community there we also had a small inauguration function for the campaign the campaign was called uh, uh, gotri campaign which is a significant campaign internationally noticed globally uh, by uh, by mssrf grow our dying trees campaign uh, which is also aiming at being a part of the uh one trillion tree campaign by the world economic forum so we were uh, we feel we were uh, super privileged to be a part of uh, joining hands with uh, mss bg and identifying uh, 20 rare endemic species uh, tree species which uh, suited to the topography uh, of mapatacheri kav and uh, without the uh, identification and mentorship or guidance uh, from Uh, MSSR of and MSS BG and by uh, Dr. Anil, we wouldn't have been able to get into the scientific understanding. We would have just planted some random tree somewhere, but we understood that there is an importance of uh, uh, identifying the right tree spe- species, and if we wanted to work towards uh, achieving uh, mitigating the climate change and uh, restoring uh, such endangered uh, lands, so we could plant hundred uh, of such tree species. Uh, along with uh, the couple of uh, community members there was a small uh, uh, function also to build awareness and uh, create capacity uh, to make the localites understand what the uh, initiative was about, uh, was about uh, these were two of uh, the projects that we can recently you know we can talk about which happened recently uh, as these were rare endemic trees and uh, uh, it was really uh, uh, an insight for us to also know that you know working on uh, uh, the sacred groves felt exactly uh, fitting into uh, united nations uh, announcing it as the 2021 to 2030 as un's uh, decade of ecosystem restoration uh, so that fell right in place and we could also uh, uh, it also contributed towards the sustainable development goal uh, life on land which is un sdg 15 as uh, there are a lot of kids i'm i'm pretty sure that there's a lot of information and technical terms here but if you can get in touch with any of the uh, any of the uh, faculties from mss bg or you can feel free to reach out to us to get more information on this uh, to uh, before i conclude i also wanted to tell you a couple of future projects that we are looking at is also uh, getting hand picking volunteers uh, to work on uh, coral reef restoration which is happening at andaman and nicobar islands as you know the significance of coral reefs and uh, uh, marine conservation uh, coral reefs also uh, balance uh, uh, there's they bring in a balance in the ecosystem of the marine life also uh, stops from uh, disasters like hurricanes and uh, tsunami so it is super important for us to take one step 
on uh, regenerating the depleting coral reefs uh, or working on the restoration. So what we do is we handpick, uh, say, uh, employees from corporates, IT field, uh, uh, employees especially, or students who are aspiring to make a difference along with uh, the support uh, and financial support from uh, corporate social responsibility, ESR, and uh, bringing in employee engagement. We look forward to uh, work on uh, uh, spreading awareness and uh, working hands-on creating uh, experiential learning, bringing in uh, the community uh, together, the fishermen folk, and uh, uh, looking at nature-based uh, uh, solutions, we would be uh, working on the coral reef restoration. As a part of spreading awareness and uh, building the leaders of tomorrow, we will also be having some online sessions and competitions for schools, especially in the uh, areas uh, around India. Yeah. And uh, so that there is a lot more of awareness spreading and uh, uh, capacity building that happens in the local region and also bringing in community building. Uh, these are a couple of projects. Uh, over to you, uh, Dr. Anil. Thank you for uh, having me and uh, uh, looking forward to you. listening Thank to you, more. Uh, you, in fact, uh, okay. uh, explained uh, well, kind of, you know, involving Youngsters, yeah, youngster in the uh, promoting nature uh, in a development. Quite often, what happens, you know, we ignore nature in the sake of development. We talk about, you know, development without nature. But uh, the sustainable development, as uh, you have been uh, talking about, you know, how do we integrate the ecological principles in the development? So very good example of uh, that sacred grove restoration. We were very happy to have uh, uh, associated with uh, your firm and you. I'm sure uh, we can attract more uh, youngsters. We need more youngsters to join the campaign uh, for uh, restoring our uh, uh, planet. Uh, Dr. Sashi, uh, are you ready with uh, your concluding remarks? Dr. Sashi? Hello. Uh, if not, uh, maybe uh, we passed our uh, time as well. Dr. Mira, 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 are you there? Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. I'm there. Yes. Okay. Mira, you uh, see your uh, point of, you know, the uh, invasive uh, species uh, removal, uh, freeing the invasive species, freeing the natural uh, vegetation from the invasive species. That is, I think it is something very interesting uh, because as you have uh, mm -hmm. mentioned, some 40% of our uh, forest area is invaded with uh, invasive species. Uh, why don't we, whether, you know, what, what, what are the bottlenecks in uh, uh, encouraging uh, forest department to uh, allocate their uh, forest areas which are invaded with invasive species for you know the kind of planting as well as you know freeing the native species what what is your experience from the forest department so sir right now what we are doing is uh, 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 what is it called a uh, uh, initial uh, mode of uh, uh, working on the forest land itself uh, but in, in our case, what we are doing is we are bringing in everything except for uh, the uh, uh, the people, uh, you know, who are jointly working, uh, you know, their own VSS and all that. Uh, remaining is all, all the resources we are bringing in. Of course, this is something that we can uh, definitely uh, engage with the department. And this is something uh, partly they're also doing, uh, especially Sena removal is something which is already going on in the Vainad area. Uh, uh, but then uh, on the lantana zones, uh, I don't think that work is currently uh, ongoing. But I'm, I believe uh, there is a lot of, uh, what is it called, focus to, uh, you know, naturally regenerate the plantation spaces, uh, especially teak and, uh, uh, you know, those kind of areas. Uh, our experience working in the teak uh, zone is, uh, first of all, the land, the soil under that is very hardened. Uh, so uh, not that, you know, we, are, we have been successful 
in uh, establishing yeah, certain yeah, species in yeah, the yeah, area. Yeah, yeah. So this definitely needs a lot of scientific temper and uh, knowledge from uh, organization like yours uh, to kind of establish again, how do you uh, nativize the plantations itself? You know, even if we don't move into the lake, the Lantana area, nativizing the plantations itself is a, uh, is a good uh, space to work on uh, natives. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, see, in, in addition to our, uh, the plantation mm -hmm. landscapes, we should look for improving the quality of our forest because if you look at the quality, especially the buffer areas of most of our forest, you know, the invaded with uh, this sort of species. So we have to involve the forest department and the planters. So when we discuss what next, uh, uh, my thinking is bringing together uh, the forest department as the key player forest department plus you know the uh, the coffee board and the tea board those you know the big plantation sectors uh, including the private uh, plantation like you know the tata coffee and uh, uh, arizona malayalam limited tea in wynad so we have to uh, maybe next uh, time uh, followed up uh, following up of uh, this discussion we can have a uh, one round of discussion involving the departments like the forest department and the uh, <clears throat> plantation department plus the the, the planters the big planter the plantation groups uh, yes. where yeah. you know hello Shashi, Dr. Shashi? Yeah. Okay, uh, maybe you, 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 you conclude what uh, you have been uh, talking to us. Please, two, three minutes. Okay. Hello. Yeah. Can you yeah. hear me? Yeah, 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 yeah. Go ahead. Uh, uh, sorry for the earlier interruption that uh, I couldn't complete my talk. Uh, hello. Yeah, yeah. Uh, can you hear me or uh, can you Yeah, we speak? can hear you. We can hear you. Go ahead. Uh, okay then. Uh, uh, I was uh, very uh, carefully. Uh, listening to the talk by Neera Chandra, and I appreciate your excellent work carried in the past. As Vayanar, as you know that, uh, and some of the points already raised by Dr. Anil Kumar, apart from the habitat or the plantation, other aspects of the natural forest should also look into it. Yeah. Because here, uh, most of the degraded forests are in the natural forest, especially in the moist deciduous forest. As we all know that the main reason for the degradation are mainly it is fire. Because studies have proved that as far as the moist deciduous forest is concerned, the regen regeneration forest, regeneration, the natural regeneration that is so vital for the perpetuation of the forest. If this, pro forest, this process is not continuing, forest will naturally get degraded because over the years, trees, tall or mature trees will get died due to will fall or overgrowth or by age. It size has to be substituted by natural process. But some of these process is not happening as in most of the natural forest, most business forests in Kerala and also particularly in Vayanad. So one, uh, when we studied it, we found that uh, the regeneration process starting from phenology, flowering, fruit, etc. Ultimately, in every year, adequate number of seedlings are regenerating or getting uh, regenerated in every year. But it is a subsequent fire, especially in the summer, that is why wiping out the new recruitment or the seedling that is uh, that is sprouted in a year. So somehow or other we can con control this. That will be a great achievement. My suggestion is that yes, after, along with the enrichment plan, See the fire and see whether natural uh, regeneration is taking place of the indigenous species. So, 
this is just so we can prove that by controlling also we can regenerate our natural re- regeneration or natural forest perpetuation we can control this and another aspect as uh, uh, dr anil kumar uh, rightly pointed out we have to get in collaboration with the forest department for doing the eco restoration forest area because in many cases in a few world bank aided project they have the assisted natural regeneration process which will they wanted to promote the growth of already existing uh, seedling and by giving some scrape weeding or other process and promote their growth and also they had uh, some re- uh, enrichment planting but the forest department always consider in terms of like economic return they want to plant economically important or in terms of timber or firewood value or other aspect they have least consideration for the uh, natural services for example why i am telling is that if you look at the highly degraded area it is so is a limiting factor because you can see that the rock, rock uh, exposure of rock in a substantial area top soil might have washed away due to other uh, loss of undergrowth vegetation undergrowth and other process and uh, during summer so in that case in such areas my suggestion is that uh, as a primary colonizer and one of the species suggested by uh, mir uh, virasa dry that ficus rapimosa so there are so many ficus it can be it can be introduced ficus will provide food for avian fauna as well as arboreal animals and the great advantage is that ficus is considered to be considered to raise a substantial amount of oxygen that is also very very important as far as natural health of the forest and environment health is concerned so in areas where there is a, this exposure of rocky areas my suggestion is that you can think of introducing uh, this plantation uh, this uh, ficus species so that it will get easily established it can very well protect the soil binding the soil and is capable of growing and another big advantage is that once the canopy is closed you have the natural growth of exotics like lantana or other species or naturally get suppressed so this is one point and another point i would uh, bring to the notice of uh, dr meera is yeah, that we are planting this uh, garcinia garcinia it is valued for its edible fruit so whenever you are planting it you should select a species or get a good quality grass which will produce more yield because it's a dioecious plant male plant is there female plant is there when you plant a male plant you don't get the fruit this also you may also that major threat is uh, major threat uh, major threat is uh, that uh, uh, that cash senna floribunda that the forest uh, does, uh, department is trying all their best how it can be eradicated but so far not it has been successful in this case uh, dr meera has any suggestion on this i would like to know it. Uh, so uh, you know from from the field perspective i mean i'm i'm really glad that you know got the opportunity to talk to you sir uh, so uh, some of this uh, uh, few observations that we have had was one uh, the availability of the native species in the local nurseries uh, you made a very valid point where department nurseries uh, are not promoting species uh, I, i would you know i i think we should call it the transient species right i mean because uh the 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 point that you mentioned about the soil degradation it's not possible to establish uh, some of the uh, species that you see in a climax ecosystem uh, you know in the in the first place so you might still need to go for a lot of these uh, trans transient species that will be established in a condition where senna is coming and invading the land and i think some of those species identification is one key aspect and i'm sure uh you know uh, uh pioneers in the field like you and dr ran can definitely uh, support uh, you know field uh, folks like us uh, the other is how do we you know how do we actually create the local nurseries and i think without uh, establishing and ensuring we have local nurseries it's definitely going to be a very effort intensive and resource intensive process uh so uh you know i've uh, already the work that we are doing since last year is in forest land restoration in wynad so i am in discussion with the social forestry department in uh, kalpata 
uh, you know, and they gave me a list of species and I had to just tell them, look, very politely tell them, look, this is not what we want because uh, we want something that will establish in an area where Senna is being removed. Uh, and, and I think that's a very difficult uh, uh, process. Some of the broadleaf species like um, Melenia uh, uh, was what I had in mind. Uh, you know, if, uh, if you have uh, any, uh, you know, any species that we should uh, definitely consider, uh, yeah, these are, uh, you know, things that we would uh, uh, like to uh, take it to the field work that we are doing. And uh, bacteria indica is a good option. It is fairly fast growing and it will come up there. It's an evergreen species. It is also growing very well outside the forest, especially in the plain. It is growing. We can think about introducing this uh, bacteria indica, like consultation, and yes, other is also uh, vertica indica. This is also growing up very well, especially in the non forest area and even in the sacred growth. Yeah, I can suggest a few more species that are uh, uh, referring to some relevant literature. Right now, I, what is in my mind, I said, this ficus species, I, my suggestion is that it's a good option for restoring in the rocky area. Because as I mentioned earlier, when you put up a suggestion to the forest department, say, they say it's a you are not valuable species. We would like to plant like teak or rosewood or uh, some other species what, of commercial value. But uh, we should also know that should consider that these species will not grow on rock or highly degraded area. What we need is a vegetation cover yeah. that set apart to this uh, timber value. This environmental value, we have to control the soil, control the soil, we have to restore over the entry to the soil, water table, or conserve the water, as you have pointed out, already made some trenches, shallow trenches, lengthwise trenches for water conservation. These are right. And another aspect is the AV fauna. And also if flora, as for fauna and birds and animals, arboreal animals, it need food as some uh, so these uh, should also be considered. Then ask them to give us uh, some allots, uh, some land to you, so that you will, you will give, yes, you can prove that by doing such and such, this area can be revegetated. That's one suggestion. I think uh, we have to conclude now because we passed already 30 minutes ahead. Uh, we have a question uh, from one Ria Yadav. Uh, so I have a question, sir. Is there any method we can grow a big forest in every state of our country? Mira, mother, can you answer? Because you, know, you are already growing forest. But every state of our country, how do we go ahead? Uh, so first is to conserve what we have. And I think there is nothing valuable than, more valuable than what, uh, you know, to conserve what we have. Uh, to just give highlight is, you know, I think if, there are diversions happening. That is something that needs to be immediately stopped. There are many forest land diversions already happening for large initiatives, right? So that's definitely a no. You know, uh, only then will this come into picture of you know our planting and our intervention. Um, all this is possible. Definitely, the community is the key. Uh, that's that's my experience. Wherever you go, be it sacred groves, any place that you work on, if the community participation is not there. Uh, it could definitely become a, a big thing. Okay, uh, what is your... Uh, Hello? Uh, Dr. Ch uh, Mr. Cherish? 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 Yes, sir. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you. Now you can answer yeah. that question. No. So the so can you repeat the question? Forest in every state. You know the kind of she is asking whether we can have a, a woodlands outside forest. Essentially, that is the idea. Yeah. Absolutely. I think uh, just as uh, uh, Ms. Meera said, it is uh, very important uh, to uh, join hands. Uh, collectively, we can create woodlands outside forest. Uh, definitely bringing in communities, uh, local communities, and uh, with the right knowledge, I think it uh, it is very possible to go ahead and do it. Thank you. Thank you, Cherish. I think uh, we have to close here now. Uh, we had a, a good uh, discussion and also another very 
i would say meaningful uh, presentation uh, from uh, meera where you know as a practitioner uh, her learning uh, is very valuable for all of us so taking from here uh, uh, what mssrf uh, will do we will uh, continue on uh, this subject uh, matter uh, the uh, eco restoration uh, we want to see that you know the uh, most of our degraded landscapes have been planted with the the right choice of uh, species so we will be uh, looking forward to have uh, uh, involvement from uh, not only from uh, three of you but you know the involvement from our listeners whom so over listened now yes engada vache ni moda so with this i i think uh, we have to stop here merl merlin uh, is there any formal lot of thanks yes sir okay then yes, you know sir. i invite you to say so, thank you okay sir thank you sir on behalf of uh, ms swamnathan botanical garden and uh, community agro biodiversity center of mssr uh, i thank uh, ms meera chandran Dr. Sachidharan sir and Mr. Cherish Manyuran uh, for gracing the important work and uh, sharing with us your findings and opinions today. I also thank Dr. Balakrishnan, uh, former member secretary of uh, Kerala State Biodiversity Board, for uh, participating in this uh, webinar. And I also wish to express my gratitude to all the students and staffs of Hillbloom School, uh, Manandawadi, and the Government High School, Trichipetta, for participating in this webinar. Beyond uh, environmental reasons, trees and forests are a vital part of human existence. without reforestation human existence as we know it would be threatened once again i would like to thank all of you for your active listening and being a part of this venture so with this let me conclude this web session uh, thank you all and have a peaceful day ahead thank you thank you thank you with this uh, we declare uh, this uh, meeting is closed thank you thank, thank you, you once again mira shashi and uh, manjura and all those listeners thank you thank you sir ആണ് മീറ്റിംഗ് കഴിഞ്ഞില്ലേ